I'm Rich. And I'm Fran. And if you're new to the channel, we travel the inland waterways of Britain along with our two dogs, Archie and Jess, aboard our narrowboat, Laura Maisie. And if you like what you see, please give us a thumbs up and maybe subscribe. And in this episode, we're on our way to Birmingham, but things don't go quite to plan. <laughs> Well, we've just come through Stupony Lock. We're at Stupony Wharf, interesting name. And uh, we're waiting to fill up with water. There's a boat in front filling up. So when they finished, we will proceed just up the canal, a hundred yards or so, and turn right onto the Stourbridge and Dudley Canal system, which we've never done before. And Francis, what's going on down there? It sounded like a police interview then. We proceeded in an easterly direction up the canal. <laughs> See what I have to put up with, folks. Anyway, look, we've just picked those salads off of the roof. And we're having some salad and Marmite wraps for Ooh, lunch. Marmite. <laughs> you either love it or you hate it, apparently. The first leg of our journey today sees us leave the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal on the Stourbridge arm for just three miles and four locks to the town of Stourbridge in the West Midlands. So here we are at the junction of the Stourbridge and Dudley Canal. Friends bringing the boat in and we've just got four locks to do before we moor up. And joy of all joys, it started to rain, even though the weather forecast said no rain today. Hmm. Oh, they're really close together, these locks, so I've popped up to empty this one, open it up so Fran can come straight out of that one into this one. There are some very well manicured gardens in these parts. Takes us back to when we used to be gardeners for other people. Can't say we miss it. Do miss doing our own garden though. Through the Virginia. Do you like Virginia? Yeah, I do. It's good ground cover, isn't it? I think that's what you call a nature reserve now. <laughs> How old is that? Look at that, ain't it? Real shame. You come in, Jess. Come on, Jess. World's most reluctant dog. Come on. Not a bad spot. That's us done for a couple of nights. The Judith and Victorian programmes of his Manningham Court Orchestra, one of the most formidable ensembles in Europe at the time. This is a recording by the Obra Winds, conducted by Nicholas. <laughs>
that's the end of our peace and quiet. Yeah, that's it. Back in suburbia for a couple of weeks. What are the chances of that? This is the first boat that we've seen moving along here for ages. I think only one or two boats have gone. There's a restriction in the canal as a tree has fallen and exactly at that point there's a boat coming the other way. But at least once he's been through we know that we can get through. That'll fix it, a bit of plastic tape. Nice tight one, Rich. Yeah, say that again. Do you want me to take over? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apparently there's a turning point at the end. So we'll turn around and then hopefully find somewhere to moor. So it's looking a bit cosy everywhere. This wonderful old working boat is being restored by viewers of the channel who, when we got married almost five years ago, sent us this beautiful traditional wedding gift, handmade by themselves. And as you can imagine, I've forgotten their names already. But anyway, thank you so much for this wonderful gift that we'll treasure forever and good luck with the restoration. So here we are at lock number one of 16 and I can honestly say I'm really not looking forward to this. Well this is possibly going to take longer than we expected. There are no rails on these gates so jumping across when you've opened one to open the other really isn't an option. So I have to walk to the other end, cross that gate which is really dodgy and narrow and the and the um, bar on that is really low, uh, which makes uh, walking across that a bit precarious. So take our time, don't rush. So you can see walking across this end is precarious in itself. It's really narrow and that white bar is really low. Joy. Bowbridge is famous for ornamental glass making since the 17th century. Sadly these days there are but a handful of makers continuing the tradition. The museum which gets no government funding has regular demonstrations of glass making. The canal along here is lined by these lovely apartments and flats and they look to me as if they've been rebuilt from old mills. Really really nice. That's what they should be doing with these old buildings. I wouldn't mind one of those actually with an allotment. How's it going then? It's okay actually, we've done, this is our fifth lock in an hour. So five locks an hour, that's not bad going. Most of them have been in our favour and there's a boat coming down, so all's good. I think we've got a volley locky on as well, haven't we? Yeah, he's not an official volunteer. He's a bit like Rocket Ron. Rocket, Rocket Ron. Ron, Rocket Rob, yeah. <laughs> He doesn't look like he's got so much rocket about him now.
just over halfway up, stop for a coffee break. Hitching a ride, hitching a ride. Right, there we go. Last one of the day, number one. These last three or four locks have been really deep ones as well. Still, good day's work. It's about four, four and a half hours, including a stop for a copper halfway through. I haven't let Fran work any of these locks. She's driven the boat through all of them. They're so precarious to get across. Ooh. Last one. So this is the limit of the navigation of the Stourbridge Canal. Straight ahead is not navigable, so we're going to turn left down this little tiny arm, which is supposed to be very weedy, but possible to moor. Um, and we might have to reverse out if it's no good. We will see. Don't <laughs> Go, like it. We're going backwards again. Yeah, we don't like it. Just don't feel comfortable here. Sometimes you just don't feel right. I mean, there's no sign of anything being wrong, but neither of us feel comfortable. comfortable there, no, no. There's, there are mooring rings here, but the way out, the only way out from that mooring is through there, through the woods into an industrial estate, I think. Um, just got to go by your gut reaction, haven't you? You know, it's just, yeah. uh, at the end of the day, it's probably okay, but. I wouldn't sleep very well, <laughs> you know what I mean, so... I mean, it's, it's only two o'clock, so if the worst comes to the worst, we've got another set of locks to do, but we can, you know, there's no reason why we couldn't do that if we have to. But, uh, yeah, at the moment, we're going back. <laughs> we've hit a problem. We're really well and truly stuck. There's something big under the prop. We can't turn the engine at all because it sounds like it's a shopping trolley or something right under the prop. Rich is trying to pole us but it's just like soft mud we can't move. The best we could do is hope to get a rope to the front of the boat and pull it but there's nobody about there's nothing we can do at the moment I don't know what we're gonna do. So Rich is trying to pull the boat into the bank now so that um, at least he can get the rope and pull us into somewhere maybe away from whatever's under the prop. So Rich is pulling us along now. I can't move the rudder at all. And we're obviously dragging something through the mud at the bottom. Um, it's not good because I don't know how we're even going to get that out. It is something really big and I don't know how we're going to get that out. That was a narrow escape. We uh, managed to pull the boat to the side and um, secured it tied it up and got into the weed hatch and a bloody shopping trolley was wrapped around the prop. Fortunately we uh, managed to stop the engine just in time before it did too much damage and uh, managed to push the shopping trolley off and uh, then we pulled the boat further forward using the ropes got it clear of it and uh, we've um, had a close shave to say the least. So not finding anywhere we're happy to moor up we decided to continue and now we're at Delph Locks, a flight of eight. So we're just about to start that and waiting for Fran to bring the boat into the first lock. So when we get to the top of this, that'll be 24 locks in a day. Not bad. So onwards and upwards, our journey from Stanbridge is now extended by another eight locks at Delft. So fingers crossed for moorings at Merry Hill. Oh, 
one lock done, seven to go. used arm just before the last lock. The canal is just the other side of those trees. Lovely setting. Not very deep though. Well that's that. 24 locks what turned out to be a bit of an eventful day. Well, there's lots of opportunities to moor here with rings. But there's street lamps all the way along. And not a boat in sight. So I don't think we'll be stopping here. That retail nightmare. Maryville Centre. Next, Argos, MS, Primark. No thanks. Way too busy and way too noisy, at Merry Hill we decide to push on through yet another lock to find a peace and quiet mooring at a location called Bumble Hole. Yes, you heard me, near Netherton Tunnel. Now this is more like it. Join us next time as we get ever closer to my hometown of Birmingham. Please like and subscribe. See you next time.